The first technological advance in modern war warfare was not the pistol. It wasn't the cannon. The first advance in warfare was not the missile or the tank. The first advance in warfare was neither the sword nor the shield. But the first advance in modern warfare was the uniform. As armies grew larger and larger, it became more difficult to recognize friend from foe. And to solve the problem of assaulting a friend and befriending a foe, the invention of the uniform was created. The greatest advance in warfare is the uniform. I need everybody who's with me to look like me. I need everybody who's got my back uh, to have the similar colors on. I need everybody who's on my side to have the same patches on. Because I need to know within moments of looking at you, if you're a friend or a foe. The reason that gang members wear the same colors is not because they have an affinity for pastels and primary hues. It is they need the ability to recognize immediately who's with them and who is not. Confusion on the football field occurs when 12 players have on 12 different uniforms and everybody's running in the same direction. And as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. Christians should be identifiable by sight. But yet it's become hard to tell what a Christian looks like. It used to be you could feel the difference in their love. You could feel the power in their embrace. You could hear the life in their language. Or watch them walk the path of peace. But now it seems to be that we love to make a mess. We embrace in every form of gossip from Facebook to Twitter. And now we don't even say we're saved anymore. I'm just spiritual, not religious. Where are the Christians who possess the form of Christ? Where are the Christians who would rather pray for you than talk about you? Where are the Christians who will send a prayer team to your house before they send the cops? Where are the Christians who walk by faith and not by sight? Where are the Christians who are in the world but not of the world? Where are the Christians who look like Christ? Yes, we struggle, we wrestle to remain relevant and engaged, being authentic while being separate. We struggle to love God and live in the world. It's a struggle to tell the truth when a lie will suffice. It's a struggle to pursue peace when all we got is problems. It's a struggle to love God when everybody wants to just love themselves. And when the struggle is this intense, when it's this dramatic, the one thing that we want to do is fight. We want to fight the world. We want to slay the world. We want to massacre the world. But I looked at the text. and Not in one place in the text did it say to put on the whole arm of God and start fighting. Not at one point in the text did it say put on the whole armor of God and slay the enemy. Not at one point in the text did it say to get in a fight with those who are in the world. But it simply tells us in the text to put on the whole armor of God and stand. He simply tells us to stand. 6.11 says stand. 6.13 says stand. 6.14 says stand. And having done all you can, all you got to do is stand. What are you standing for, Christian? Stand for truth. Stand for righteousness. Stand for peace. Stand for faith. Stand for salvation. And here it is this evening. I'm tasked to talk with the daunting responsibility of the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is designed to protect the torso. The torso of the human body makes up 36% of the surface area. In and of itself, it is anatomically the greatest single portion of the body. Within the torso, there are housed two vital organs, the lungs and the heart. If either one of these organs are damaged, the body won't live. If your lungs are damaged, you stop breathing. If your heart is damaged, your blood stops circulating. While you can lose a leg and keep on living. You can lose an arm and keep on living. You can lose eyes, ears, kidneys, even a pinky toe, and keep on living. But tell me, Christians, how do you stop breathing and keep living? How does your heart stop beating, but you keep living? How do you lose your air, but keep your life? And if your heart is damaged, it affects your life. If your heart is damaged, it affects your well-being. 
If your heart is damaged, it affects your outlook. If your heart is damaged, it affects your relationships. If your heart is damaged, you begin to grow cold and grow old. If your heart is damaged, you get bitter. And the reality of the situation is that the damage always starts in the heart. You could have forgiven them if they simply slapped you in your face, but they broke your heart. You could have let it go if they kicked you in your leg, but you thought that you could trust them, and then they broke your heart. If they had have only stolen something from you, but left your heart intact, you could have overlooked what was stolen, but they hurt your heart. But the breastplate is designed to protect your heart. The blessed plate of righteousness shields and covers the heart. There are some issues that we can't make better. Some things we can't change. And the only thing that we can do is pray to be covered. Uh, there are some things that I can't move. The only thing I can do is pray that God covers me. There are some places I'm still wounded. And all I can say is God cover me. I don't even know what else to say, God, just cover me, God, help. I don't even know how else to feel, God, I'm bruised, God, just cover me, Lord. I don't even know what else to do, God, just cover me, Lord. I'm still angry about some things I'm lost. I'm still bitter about having to go through some things I had to go through. I know I'm not all together well, God, help me, Holy Ghost. I need you to cover me. And here it is that we find the difference between right and righteousness. Uh, right is a position, but righteousness is a condition. Yeah. Everybody wants to be right, yeah. but very few want to live in righteousness. Yeah. Everybody wants the position, but very few want the condition. Yeah. It's very easy for you to be right, uh, uh, but it's very difficult to be righteous. Ah, uh, yes. It's easy to be right. It's hard to be righteous when folks are content to drag your name through the mud. It's easy to be right but hard to be righteous when the best you can do and you seem to be failing. It's easy to be right but hard to be righteous when everybody lives in a glass house but they keep throwing rocks at you. It's easy to be right but hard to be righteous when they have a text message on you and you got a video message on them. It's hard to be right but it's easy to be right but hard to be righteous when they ain't but one child support payment from being back in jail. It's easy to be right, but hard to be righteous when they know your biography, but you know their criminology. It's easy to be right and hard to be righteous when you want to walk in the earth and do what God wants you to do, but all around you is falling down. The song says, all around me is sinking sand. And if I was trying to be right, I would do like them. I would lie like they lie. If I wanted to be right, uh, I would do like them. And cuss like they cuss. But I want to be righteous. So I pray the Lord you hold me together Lord. I want to be righteous. So I pray God hold my tongue Lord. I want to be righteous. So I say God hold my hands Lord. God you know I'm angry. But I want to be righteous. So God just hold my arms together Lord. I don't want to be right. I want to be righteous God. So keep the car in this lane Lord. I don't want to be right. I want to be righteous God so help me to walk out the door Lord I don't want to be right I want to be righteous God so help me to walk away Lord I don't want to be right I want to be righteous so God help me get through it Lord I don't want to be right but God I want to be righteous so help me get over the next mountain God I don't want to be right I want to be righteous so God get me through the next valley I don't want to be right God I want to be righteous. 